And we're live. It's Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, so you know what that means. It's time for another episode of Hashtag Event Icons, presented by Endless Events. The show where you get to ask the icons of the events industry anything. So you might be wondering, how do you get to ask questions? All you have to do is use the question panel on the right of GoToWebinar to submit your questions. Or you can hop on Twitter to submit your questions with the hashtag event icons. We'll be answering your questions live during the entire show. Before we get started, the more people we have watching, the better conversation we can have. So please help share hashtag event icons on Twitter and Facebook. Just tell your friends to watch at www.event-icons.com. Now, without any further delay, this is Hashtag Event Icons with your hosts, Will Curran of Endless Events, Laura Lopez of Social Tables, and Brent Kruger of Event Technology Consulting. That's right. I made the bumper, so it must be official. Uh, I'm happy to it's when happy to be here, uh, and welcome everybody to Event Icons. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, Laura and Will are on assignment this week, so they're not going to be joining us today. But it's my ple pleasure and my privilege to be here with Sylvia Pellegrini, who is a vlogger and the managing director of Events Uncovered Television. Sylvia, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Brent. Is it a little weird to be on kind of on the other side of the interview here? Yeah, it's freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no, there's no, there's no reason to freak out. Uh, as as anybody that watches event icons know, this is a very casual conversation show. It's it's one of the reasons that I like it, and I'm, and I'm happy to be coming over to the team here. Is that it's just it's just a conversation, and it's a conversation about events and meetings and the entire industry. And it's just an absolute joy to uh, be on with you today. So we have to start with where we always start with event icons, and that is mm -hmm. to ask you. What is it that got you into this crazy industry that we do? What what brought you into the events industry? Well, I think it's the story of many. I happened to fall into it. Yes. So literally what happened is I wanted to find out what I wanted to do in life. And I went to a course where they were helping you to build a web website for free. And um, I, was, I was looking at the website, but what you had to do, you had to put a little piece of paper in front of you saying what was your, you know, what was your job, what you wanted to do. And, and I, I, I wasn't sure. And I was like, well, I kind of like events. So let's just put down like event planning. So I did that. And uh, that was so funny because the person opposite me said, do you actually organize weddings as well? And I thought, why not? How hard can it be? I said, yes, I do. And um, she goes, I'm getting married in a year. <laughs> do you want to organize mine? That's how I actually got my first line. So that was by chance. Well, and, and well, how did it go? <laughs> so it, you had enough time to kind of do a crash course or what? That was actually amazing. I loved it. I, I seriously did. And um, by doing that wedding, I did a few more weddings. Um, and it, it was kind of my thing. I really enjoy doing weddings, but um, I met someone at a wedding um, and asked me if I did corporate events and I moved into corporate events and I found good clients, but also good mentors. And yeah, that was, it was good. It, it was good for, for what I knew. Very good. All right. So how long after that did the idea for Events Uncovered uh, come into play? And, uh, and, and then what was it? What, what got you inspired to try and create this new thing? So it didn't kind of really take me very long because I realized, well, you know what? I don't really know much here. So I better do something to learn more. And so um, what I thought uh, I'd, I, what I wanted to do is how do I learn more? I asked myself, what, what can I do to learn more? Um, and I came up with the idea of Events Uncovered. So let me ask event professionals uh, who do this and are successfully doing this, how are they doing it? Why are they doing it? How did, you know, why can I learn from them by just interviewing them? And so I, start by I found someone um, on LinkedIn. I looked through a lot of different profiles. I found someone on LinkedIn. I like this profile and I sent him a message and I said, you know what, I'm starting this. Would you like to 
you know, be a guest? And he said yes. And that was the first one. So it, it kind of started from just your own quest for knowledge. I mean, you just wanted to learn more yeah. about the industry and Yeah. Well, that's the best I mean, that's the best way to do it to be perfectly honest. I mean, the the best shows I've always felt were the ones where it came from the, you know, the person's internal passion and questions. I mean, is that um who who was the first person that you interviewed? Darren Kerr. Yeah. Factor um six factor one six nine is is an awesome guy. And so what you what he did is he had he had so much patience, bless him, because at that point I had no idea on actually talk to people how to interview them. So um I had prepared all my questions in advance. I had sent him, they had they had agreed to them, and then so what I was doing is literally read the read them out so it was like a script I knew where I was going um, it didn't matter what he was saying um, for as long as I followed my questions so he could uh, he could answer one question and it could easily it could have easily led me through something else but it wasn't my second question and therefore I wouldn't have asked it I would just follow what I knew I had to follow um, and at the end of that interview which kind of lasted like 30 minutes, recorded 30 minutes. Um, I um, I asked for you know any recommendation, and at that point he actually gave me about 30 names, um, and he put me in touch with 30 people, nice. and that's how that's how I carried on basically because I I had a lot of contacts I could, could call. Well, that's I mean, so so straight out of the gate, you had your next at least several episodes uh, in in play. How how have things changed? So for for anybody that doesn't know, you're now up over three hundred episodes at this point. Um, mm -hmm. How how has your um, preparation process changed over that time? So it was three years ago now, or four? Started two thousand and fourteen, January okay. two thousand and fourteen. Um, so I did the hundred episodes for the first for the first uh, three years, um, and so 2014, 2015, 2016, and then I I kind of slowed down now. So I have the the process like the preparation process. Well, that's actually interesting because I used to stress a lot about it. I used to read about people. I used to look at you know for the actual subjects for the content. To, what can I ask? How how can I come up with questions? What will be interesting questions? Um, and and then I wanted the questions to be approved before um, I would ask them, just in case they were uncomfortable with it. And what changed a lot um, throughout? What I I understood is is no point in asking a series of questions um, if I'm not actually listening. Uh, to their answers. So that was the first thing that changed. So I started by not preparing the questions anymore. So I would just prepare the first question. Um, a, a first question that the person, the guest, is comfortable with. Um, and then from there, I, I just pick on, I would just pick on something. Something that you say, something that doesn't quite make sense to me, something that you know, even sometimes in just words, it's like, what do you mean? What's that? You know, um, and and I, th I think I'm just really curious. So I just want to know things. So um, that's the preparation. That's how we changed. I don't I don't write down anything anymore. It's the first question, and everything else is just natural. It just come natural to me. Do you give them that first question, or not even not even that one anymore? Yes, because I think. I mean, I have to be comfortable, but they also have to be comfortable. You know, there's no point in a big surprise effect, you know. Um, when we uh, sit down and record, it's literally a, it could be a, a, a 30 minutes conversation altogether um, where we record different parts. Um, and if we had to still find out what the subject, what the topic, what the first question, it would be a waste of time really. So the moment that they kind of agree uh, on doing the interview, then we, you know, I, I simply ask, is there anything you actually want to discuss? Is there anything that you are very comfortable in talking about? Are you confident? Is something that maybe is not out there as much and you actually want to you know, say, say say it loud. You know, sometimes some things are not discussed enough in our industry. So um, that's how. It, and if they don't, I just have a, an idea of the topic and come up with a few questions and ask you know for them to pick. 
you know, you said that some some topics aren't discussed enough. I mean, do you have an example of that? I mean, is there one that particularly jumps to mind of something like, oh boy, we don't we don't talk about that enough? Um, well, <laughs> there's been a couple of occasions when um, some people maybe have said that uh, women are not uh, enough on panels and they are not enough. Uh, they are not um, speakers. They are not there on stage enough as they should be. Um, that is one thing. Uh, one other thing was um, there's a lot of distinction between um, a, a venue provider or a provider of a service, um, but speci specifically talking about the venues. Um, and the person in question was saying, well, um, a venue provider doesn't really just provide you with a venue. There is a, a, a umbrella of things or services they can provide. So by the, by just saying is a venue provider, you kind of reducing their 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 all um, work, you know, in in really little as as if they weren't doing enough, basically. So that's a couple of example. So just let me see if I understand that last one correctly. That that you're saying that you know, kind of just classifying people as a venue provider kind of denigrates all of the work that they do in the background. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can buy that. I mean, it's 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 it never ceases to amaze me the uh, number of gears you know that, that need to come together to put together an event, yeah. right? I mean, it'd be like just a caterer, or you know, just you know that I can definitely see that kind of thing where there's a lot that goes into each one of these disciplines. Yeah, I agree. Um, as it goes, so as you've talked to all of these people, like you said, to to learn more, what, what have been some of the top takeaways that you've been able to do over the course of these 300 episodes? What have been some of the things that really stuck out at you? Like, wow, that's, I got to remember to use that. Let me just write that down quick. I think more than anything is, um, what I realize is there's some trends, right? So there is waves of interviews where people tend to talk about some things and then waves, and then that, that period kind of goes and then something else comes in. And, and a lot of people, Seem, they want to make the same point, although they don't know it's the same point and then someone else. But for me, it's like, yeah, I know we 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 touched on this before. But the one thing is that um, it, it is obviously all the time. That that is something that I probably discuss about seventy or eighty percent of my interviews is um, make sure that you know your objectives. <laughs> you know, when you set up an event, like. Why are you doing it? Is it necessary to do it? But your event, your your objective should be the first thing you think about. And that was something that I was like, interesting. But you know, when you you listen to it, and they, I've I've heard about it in so many different ways, but they all go to the same point. You know, objectives. That was it. So that's the one thing. And the second thing will be about technology. First. Um, create your strategy and then think about the te technology you want to use and it's not necessary to use technology if it's not necessary don't use it there's no need that was the second thing I think I was on about somewhere around episode 105 and I'm pretty sure I probably said something to that effect because that's a huge one for me but it goes it goes back to exactly what you're saying though is have the goals have the objectives in mind in all aspects of the event, so whether it's the technology or again the catering or the venue or all those kinds of things, that the the best event people are always thinking about the goals and objectives, and then trying to find the right technology or find the right other services uh, that, that that are going to go towards that goal. You uh, you mentioned trends. What have been some of the trends that were around when you started, versus now? You know, about three years later, that it was like, okay, that was the big talk for about six months, but now nobody's that talking is a about good it. Question, you know, I I don't even know if I remember what was the trends back then. It, it you know, if you think about it, okay, it's been like three years. I don't know yeah. if I can remember what I ate yesterday, so I'm not quite sure. That's fair. I can do it, but. Trends, um, what was it? I mean, right now is um, technology as in, um, I mean, technology in general. <laughs> technology, um, there was a bit when it was just about apps, a lot uh, talking about apps, but now it's be more about um, holograms and, um, you know, 
put your glass on and you know that that kind of thing so it, it shifted in that sense in technology but there was a, a bit when i spoke about apps like for but maybe about 30 episodes consecutive everybody wanted to talk about apps i mean there are a lot of apps out there mm -hmm. um, and hundreds <laughs> they don't necessarily do everything you know all of them do the same things but from my side not using it but just listening about it uh, i i always saw well, it must be big, you know, <laughs> that's, that's something must be big. People must be using it if people come up with it all the time. So that, that would be the, the main, or, or at least with the one I remember. <laughs> very good. Very good. So uh, it's, I mean, you, you talked about the, the, the goals and, and having the objectives in mind. Is that, is that kind of uh, the, the biggest piece of advice that you're hearing or is there something in over and above that that you kind of heard over and over again as far as you know if, if I were starting over or here's what I'd do that kind of thing objectives is always yeah. uh, to be honest is always something that um, I hear from a lot of different people um, and one that probably I, I, I liked and I took on board because I mean objectives yes it is and especially if you're planning an event but maybe from my point of view the second piece of advice that I really uh, look up and and I know exactly who mentioned it and when they mentioned it and who, who started that basically for me um, is just be yourself uh, is that so simple I mean I know it's simple and I know, I mean, I should know it, you know, why would you want to be anyone else? But it's just that reminder, like be yourself because you are enough and you are good and people are following because of you. You know, you, you are a personality and don't be shy. Don't be, uh, don't, don't try to be like perfect um, to appeal to a lot of different people. Um, just be you. Um, and he wants to stay, stay, and who, who doesn't, you know, goes. And no, you, you're not there to be liked by everybody. So that is a one thing that, yeah, stuck with me. Do you think that that has um, application? I mean, obviously that applies to what we're doing right now. I mean, but, you know, and when you're doing interviews and things like that, but I mean, does that have implications outside of, you know, the interview side and into your personal life and your business as well? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you see, I think the difference is when I do interviews, I'm kind of really, and in, in, in the most like nicest way possible, I'm kind of stuck in the sense that you know this is kind of what you see, and I'm just really concentrated. There's no movement. There's there's not much personality that comes out. So I, it's me in a very restricted way, <laughs> you know, but. When I, for example, vlog, um, that's when the personality comes out. That's when it's me, uh, me being me. And what I thought, what, what I think is great is I think reactions from people that have seen vlogs are, I would say, 100% better than people watch the interview. Not because, I'm not saying because of the content, obviously, because content of the interview is 100% better than the vlog. The vlog is more about the experience. It's more about me being me and see what am I seeing? Uh, how, what, where am I? You know, would you like to be where I am? Would you like to see what I'm doing? You know, behind the scene type of thing. So, and I took that be yourself and that's why I start vlogging. So, when, yeah, I was just gonna say then, so when, when did, yeah, when did you start doing that? Just the vlogging side? Yeah, I I started about uh, well last year about September. Um, okay. I wanted to do it, and I was thinking, how? Who do I start with? How do I get involved? You know, um, am I gonna look like a freak if I go around looking at talking to a camera? Um, and most of the time, I do feel that way, but I don't care. <laughs> you know, it's like you know, laughing. You know, you're just looking at the camera, and then you laugh, and you're thinking, ah, oh, people are looking at you. So you kind of go shy for two seconds. You don't talk, you just like keep staring at the camera and then you carry on like nothing happened. But um, I only did about eight to nine um, vlogs. Um, so I don't vlog every day. Um, I vlog when I go to events. Um, and I 
I used to go to events and interview there, bring a cameraman with me and interview. Um, and I think um, I wanted um, a different experience. Um, so it's not much about the content, it's more about literally the experience. Who am I meeting? Um, I wanted to show what events are from my point of view, but also what, what exactly is happening at these events. You know, behind the scene, yes. Um, who am I talking to? Why am I talking to these people? Is, is everybody always like, um, you know, um, with shiny dresses and drinking champagne? No, it is not. <laughs> and so, I, I, and I think a lot of people can relate to that. Uh, and I think they're fun. And some, for some people who are not even in the industry, it's kind of interesting to see how it actually works. Um, so I would say, yeah, about, about September last year. Um, so I like that. I enjoy that. What was the most recent one that you did? I did one a couple of weeks ago um, where, where I actually, well, I vlog for the whole day. So what happened is I used to, I, I did about eight vlogs where I went to a particular specific event and vlogged that event for a particular company. So um, someone would invite me or someone would sponsor the vlog, I would go to that um, event and vlog. That's it. And that's for, I, I send it out to my social media, but it's for them for whatever use, right? What I wanted to try was to vlog the entire day. So I had a day where I went to an event in the morning with someone. Then I went to a conference uh, or exhibition, sorry, in the afternoon. Um, and then I went to the pub, right? I know the pub is not quite, <laughs> it's not quite an event. However, I went with kind of a lot of event professionals. So I wanted to see what it, you know, let me show you what it's like at seven o'clock in the morning and coming back at 11 at night. What did I do? How, what did I meet? How tired I was? Was I impressed? What did I like? What did I, what did I like? And um, always try to make it fun, um, which is interesting because when, you, the, when I actually do the editing, I laugh. It's, it, I mean, not because I'm necessarily funny, but you know, things that, that happened to me are funny. The, in the last vlog, I was with someone, his name is Will Watts, yeah? We were just standing next to each other and there was this massive robot uh, robot talking and making jokes. It was funny, so it was a, it was a big <laughs> crowd. He came close to us, like opposite, like, staring at us, and he was saying, um, stand away, because I'm, I'm going to blow. And I'm thinking, is going to blow. What, what, what does this mean? He sneezed like he actually squared the water. We were completely wet. You know, <laughs> this is not things you make up. So I was filming and I'm thinking, oh my God, he squared the water. Us. It's actually, it was entertaining. I, was, I mean, only me. I mean, <laughs> well, if you're laughing while you're editing, it's usually a good sign. That <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, what else? I mean, it, I enjoyed it. It was funny. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the question that I always hate uh, to to get, <laughs> but but hey, I, I'm the one asking the questions on this one, so I get to ask them. Um, but because I know I know there's no good answer when when you ask someone what their favorite episodes are, or things like that. There's there's never a good answer because everyone, you know, that everyone's different. They're all good. But can yeah. you at least point out some of the ones that stand out the most to you, the ones that are the most memorable, maybe for different reasons? Nope. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, I'm well, joking. Thank you so much for I the mean, time. It's been wonderful for you having <laughs> No, I mean, for sure, the first one, I've got to say, because if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't have got started. He, he believed in what I was doing, and he, um, he believed enough to give me, like, 30 contacts that I could get, you know, get in touch and carry on with it. So if it wasn't for him, for that, um, I don't think I... I would have found it really hard, you know, to, to carry on. I think he gave me that push. Um, hmm, okay. So there are a few people who I have interviewed and it's, now it's not just because the interviews are amazing because as you said, I can't pick. Everybody has been great. Um, but I think it's because with some of them, I actually became friends. So some of them I met at events, like we did. Um, some of them 
um, we actually get to Skype, we get to talk a lot. Uh, if you're not in this site, with some people I went to the pub. So with the with the people I get to hang out is the kind of it build it build that relationship, and I I feel more I feel closer to them. But again, nothing to take away from the actual content of the interviews. It's more of a personal is is me being Italian and wanting to hang out with people. That's all. <laughs> And Does it's, that I mean, your question? <laughs> yeah, no, I was hoping for some names, but I, I totally, I totally understand. Like I say, I hate the question as well, and you never want to leave anybody out. But with with three hundred people, that would, it would it would likely it would likely happen that somebody. Well, why didn't she mention me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but I totally understand it. But I mean, I, here's what blows me away: is is you know I've been looking through the 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 list over the course of you know, and and here's one of the things that I know you're really good about is is every year you've done here's the last here's a hundred you know the hundred people. Here's the 200 people. Here's the 300 people that I've interviewed. Is what always amazes me as I look through that list, and I encourage everyone to please go to Events Uncovered TV. If you if you haven't listened to these episodes, there's there's 300 episodes plus at this point of gold. Um, there's so many people on this list that I know, like that amazes me, right? It's like, oh, wow, oh, yeah, I know him. Oh, yeah, I know her. She's great. Oh, that's wonderful. But then there are so many more that I don't. And that's truly, I think, where the value of, of something like what you're doing is that it exposes you to different people that you might not necessarily be you know, rubbing elbows with normally, but maybe you might want to after seeing their interview. So, so I guess that's more what I was trying to get at is, you know, were there some people that really kind of stuck out um, that, you know, maybe, maybe certain, you know, maybe the, uh, the event props community that I know, they might not be familiar with, or, you know, maybe because you're coming from a European perspective, you know, someone in the U.S. might not be like, oh, they, that guy's amazing, but I've never heard of him because he's in, you know, he's in, uh, Holland. Um, so, you know, is anybody like that that might stick out? That you might might feel comfortable mentioning. Okay, before I answer to that question, um, the the reason why sometimes I get to talk to people who are not really um, maybe famous yet um, is because when when I ask for recommendations um, and people ask. Who are you looking for? Um, is it a specific field? Is something you know a specific topic? I said no, there is not. Um, and the reason why I say that is because is it could be anyone who has got as much uh, experience or as little experience, and um, who is um, involved with the event industry, not just from a planner point of view uh, or a vendor point of view, but it could be someone teaches some skills that are not only beneficial to the event industry, but other uh, industry as well. Um, so I'm, and, and there might be things that I can't, or I've never thought about. So um, it, let, let, let's take a very simple example. You, you talk about technology um, and you talk about, uh, I don't know, there is an app. Um, you, for you, is something that you come across and maybe that particular app, I don't even know exists. So how can I ever mention I want to talk to that person if I don't know the person or the app or that particular service exists. So that's why I leave it very open. Um, and and the thing is, it, it might be that it, it's something that I'm going to use or not, but there might be some way, someone out there who is going to use it. And it might be that you consider a service, a person, um, a company amazing, and someone else might not, but someone else might. So. If, if you know any, uh, this is why I love the industry because we are so connected. Because we, there is is a big big community, and so uh, I love that about it. That everybody can learn from anyone. It doesn't matter if you started in the industry ten days ago. You might have had previous experience that can help um, other businesses. So long, really long answer to your question. Now <laughs> thinking, <laughs> thinking Which is about totally it. Fine. Thinking about the gems now. Who did I? Um, it, you see, I don't, I can't even think about. There are three hundred plus. There are actually three hundred and eight. Tomorrow, the three hundred and ninth episode will go out. So, um, one person that it might have been really, really 
popular over there, but I didn't know. And when I got to know, um, I was really happy. Um, is uh, no, I'm not gonna say. Okay, so I'm gonna say. Actually, I'm gonna say. <laughs> no, um, is Alex. Alex Plaxon. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't know. We actually, the first time we started talking, um, it, we, was, we were introduced by someone else. And when we started talking, we spoke for four hours. We actually spoke on Skype for four hours about things, you know, about life even. I gone extremely well. Um, another person um, is Aubrey, Aubrey Nowiski. She's amazing. She's incredible. Uh, again, I think, you know, when you have that connection, um, I didn't know. Maybe because I'm in this side, I didn't know. And maybe everybody else is thinking, well, we've known them a long time. You know, I, I don't know. But for me, it's like that they are they're incredible. Um, there's um, people like, and, and it's not necessarily someone I've interviewed, um, but um, there is um, Abby. Abigail Cannons, for example, she um, used to work for uh, IBTM. Now she works Slido. Um, she's incredible, and I think she's going to be on that list soon because she's amazing. And I, I would want everybody in the states to know her um, because I think it's yeah, she's incredible, honestly. Um, but also there are people like um, uh, Elena um, or Kathleen, um, and they. There's, they were students not long ago, um, but they're doing amazingly well, and they are really good. Um, I mean, they work really hard, and they love what they do, um, and they're good at it. So that's the kind of people that we want in the industry, right? Absolutely, man. And then for me personally as well, that's the, those are the best conversations where, like you say, you you just start a conversation, and next thing you know, it's three hours later, and you've been talking shop, you know, and life, and you know everything from that time on. I want to come back to people you'd like to have on the show, but I want to just circle back and 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 say, you know, obviously, I'm not going to get you to pull any any names out, but that's okay. I had to try. I had to try. Um, but what if you could maybe just tell us what some of the most recent episodes were, just to give people a flavor of the variety and stuff that you bring. I know just because I'm dipping in and out all the time, but maybe someone who hasn't seen the show, if you could just give us some examples of some of the most recent topics, and maybe then if you want to, some of the ones that are coming up, and then we'll talk about maybe the dream, uh, dream guests down the way. Okay, so... Um... The next one, which is coming up tomorrow, um, is a lovely lady called Susan Robertson. Um, and she is the founder of Sharpen Innovation. Um, you got to see. I mean, she, she, is, she is good. She is good. Um, the last one I did, who went out last week, um, was with um, Kevin O'Connor. And um, he works for a Sonic uh, Sonic Foundry, um, a site. Um, for example, we talked about um, something that is really, um, it, it really get my heart beating, which is um, video uh, content strategy. Okay. I, don't, I don't know if that's what you were expecting, but that is it. For me, it's like, yeah, we. Everybody gets interested in, in and I'm not, I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to judge. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, that was really interesting because um, obviously I use video a lot um, and I know it's, I know I'm not organizing an event, but there are ways that I can, I could be using it, um, I could be using my video as well. Um, someone else I interview uh, is um, Michelle um, Bergstein and she is, um, when we talked about social media. Um, and now I don't, I don't remember the order, so I might be saying someone like from episode 103, <laughs> you know. Um, I, I mean, there is the big, big names like Dahlia um, or um, Nick, uh, Nick Varelli or Aaron, um, who's, by the way, they're, 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 all of them are incredible. Um, but um, and I, I'm, try, I'm trying to think, who did I interview? <laughs> you know when you go like blank, it's like, who did I talk to? <laughs> Was it was anyone? I mean, um, Michael, um, Mike Doan as well is is really good. Uh, Cadmium, um, Cadmium DC um, is really good. 
who else did I talk to? I mean, the, the variety of topics is like, I cannot even say I talked about social media the most. It's not. It's from planning to um, AV. I interview Will, uh, Will Curry, and we talked about AV. Um, I talked, uh, I spoke to Laura, um, so Laura Lopez, and we talked about uh, communities, how to build communities. Um, there are, we talked about, I, I spoke to a lot of people about apps and tech um, and how to use it. Um, a lot about sponsorships, um, a lot about marketing, uh, a lot about the use of videos, um, a lot about education as well. Because um, some people might not get into the industry just by because they come from university or from degree. Uh, there might be other ways to get in. Um, so a, a lot about education. Um, and I'm thinking, I, I know I spoke to a lot of other people. I, I, I know I do. I mean, I knew well, this. Maybe, maybe this will help. Maybe this will help jog your memory. But what I wanted to ask was anything along the lines of, you know, uh, you mentioned marketing and things like that. And sometimes that gets a little bit short shrift. We talk about it in the context of our events. But mm -hmm. did you guys develop, uh, you know, delve into any topics regarding, you know, marketing ourselves? You know, because a lot of event people are small business owners. We're just one person or maybe mm -hmm. two or three people. Have you got into any topics like that where it's it's more like, dealing with the business itself rather than what we do on a weekly basis? Yeah, um, I, I know I spoke about uh, um, with a couple of people, um, the, the per but the person um, and actually is one of the first few people who talked to me about Be Myself, uh, that's Judy, uh, Judy Oller, um, or Judy Oller, so she, it was about how do I bring myself out there, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm by myself, but how do I make, how do I make an impact? Um, can I keep like being myself and be liked <laughs> or, or are people going to like you now? Right. <laughs> so, or am I just a horrible person and I probably shouldn't? <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes, we have touched on that because I think marketing is not just about um, marketing your event or how to use social media for marketing or how to um, use videos to market your event or how to use video as part of your marketing but it is about you um, as a brand um, and I think one of the reason why I love videos um, is because it allows me to connect and to create that type of relationships with between my brand me and the audience um, that is uh, uh, that is the way that I uh, am allowed to market myself in a very subtle way if that makes sense absolutely it does yeah yeah I mean it's it's uh, probably something that we all need to be a little bit better about is, is being a bit more authentic and just be yourself you know he kind of keeps coming back to that doesn't it yeah I mean being authentic is is a very very important to me but it's um because there's no point I I know I try at the beginning of trying to not try to be someone else but really try to fit in um in a certain way that did not work so and that I used to much work polished version of yourself or that that you know that version that you think you should be yeah well, I, I think everybody tries just because they want to make sure they can fit in, you know, uh, they don't get left out. Yeah, 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 I can't disagree with that. So, coming back around a little bit uh, to where you started to go, uh, who have you got on your dream list of people that you'd love to get on the show? This may be your opportunity to, to, to reach out. Um, to be honest, I've been very blessed. I've been very lucky because um, a lot of people who I thought I would never get in touch with um, were recommended and once I got in touch they actually said yes. Um, uh, for example, uh, David Adler. Um, it, it was one that I kept saying, I'm really sorry, I'm really, emo <laughs> I've got my emotions running here. It's like, I, I can't believe you're there, you know. And so, he, he, for example, I was really happy. I was so excited about interviewing him. Um, but if I, I mean, Abby would be one someone I, I would want to interview. Um, I think she's she's great. 
I honestly think she's great, not just as an event professional, um, but as a friend. Um, she She's absolutely smart and she's very creative. I like how she thinks. So I would love um, her to be on, on the show. Um, and to be honest, I've never asked her. So maybe if I did, she would. <laughs> maybe it's just as simple as that. Um, who else would I want? Well, well, let's try this. Um, so if anyone knows. <laughs> no. um, so he organized weddings. Or that's how I see it. So there's two people. The first one is um, Mr. Tutera. Is it Tutera? Um, he organizes what I I'll I'll give you I'll give you the the links for him. I know exactly. But the second person um, would be um, no. I'll, let's come back to that. Okay. Let's let's come back to that. <laughs> that's that's fine. And you I'll be know, honest. I, I I'm so one bad one. with names. Anybody that has ever met me, usually the second, you know, the, usually the first sentence out of my mouth is "Hi, I'm Brant," and the second sentence out of my mouth is usually "I'm terrible with names." Um, so even if I'm you were to tell me the name, yeah. But also, I'm thinking, what if I tell you something and maybe it should be someone else? Let me just like limit my list to short, so just in case someone knows someone, it's better goes directly. <laughs> right. uh, I will I will get back to you. I will I will tell you exactly the name by by the end of the show. I completely understand. That's that's no problem at all. I, I, what I'll say uh, along those lines, though, and and you alluded to this, is it is amazing how open most people are if you just ask. And that you know, going back to some of the the early shows that I worked on, it was incredible how often if you just asked. Uh, yeah. They would say yes, and you know, you hear them on another podcast or something like that, and you go, "Wow, that would be an amazing guest." And you just shoot them an email and say, "Hey, would you like to be on the show?" And they come back and say yes. And and that is one of the wonderful things about this industry is that there are so many people that are willing to say yes. Or as a as, as a good friend of mine often says, you don't get one hundred percent of what you don't ask for. So uh, it's uh, it's very true. Yeah. Um, it is very true. Some sometimes I. I thought I'm never gonna get that person um, and they were the most <laughs> like natural like they never have an issue um, and if they say no it's fine anyway um, right. you know what you got to lose if you don't ask exactly I say no but that's it so so what you know there's always someone else did I vamp long enough for you to find the name uh, no okay one is David Tutera is, maybe I'm saying it wrong. Is it to to Tara? T yeah, and I'm sorry. I don't. I'm like I said. I'm so bad with names. That's why I write everything so, down. I, I, maybe I'm saying it wrong, but it's definitely one of them. So, is one. We'll get back to another one. Okay. No problem. <laughs> no problem at all. We need to start wrapping things up anyway as we start to get sure. towards the towards the end here. So we like to be respectful of everyone's time and try and keep things under an hour or so. Okay. So um, we'll start getting into some of the, the the more fun, silly questions that we always tack on at the end. Um, but before we do, you know, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I can guess what it is. But if you had to pick, you know, a single tip takeaway from your time, uh, do you think? Do you think uh, you could share what that would be? A symbol, a single tip, um, apart from be yourself and be authentic. Well, that's what I was going to guess it was going to be. So I, 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 I um, can't disagree with it. So it's okay to leave that, leave it be that way. I think that would be it, and um, probably let yourself go. So it's okay. It's okay if you're not perfect. You know, there's not such a thing. And I can't. I can't agree more. I mean, it's it's it's. Uh, I think it's a great. It's a great. If 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 that's the one thing you're going to take away from it all, I think I think that's a great thing to go. Uh, I think it's a thing to go with. Um, so what we usually ask, uh, kind of as wrap up questions for uh, for our guests, is we're always trying to find out if there's something new uh, that's in their life. Now it doesn't have to be technological. It doesn't have to be an app. Um, there's been all kinds of crazy answers uh, given to this question. But so, what's new in your life? What uh, cool resources or books or websites or blogs or gadgets? What, what what's new in your life that you're wanting to share with the folks out there? Well, it might be new for me. I know it's not new for a lot of people. Um, there's a couple of um, one is obviously Slack because uh, 
I, I, I've discovered it not long ago and I think it's incredible. Um, it's useful, it gets to the point uh, and it gets my job uh, much easier. So that's one. And the second, like the website, there's a website, it's called Canva. C-A-N-V-A um, and that's where I do most of my um, artwork. Um, it, it's very simple um, and it helps you because it has um, measurement already there so if you're doing something for YouTube for example for you know for the banner above it, it's already there so you just select that so once you create it um, you're not gonna have like an image in front of you or something or the name on um, like the uh, your website number or name sorry on top of it it's it's clear how it is it's set it's, it's easy to use um, so probably that's two that I can think of yeah I would say that for now it's gonna be interesting to watch seems like everybody in their dog has come out with a slack competitor over the course of the last couple of months, so Microsoft just released theirs uh, the other day. Um, but I mean, people people love it. I, I, I think every platform's got its pluses and minuses. Myself. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm probably not substituting as much as I could because I, there's other things that I still love using. Um, th there's actually something else. There's Zoom. Um, so I use a lot of Skype. Uh, mainly my interviews are done on Skype um, and I was introduced to Zoom uh, and quality is extremely is extremely good um, and it's actually free um, if you're doing one-to-one -one, uh, meetings or in my case interviews um, and you pay if you are um, over a certain amount of time or also if you have one too many you know if you have two, two, more than two people on it so that is also really good so basically a one-to-one -one communications app that you're going to do kind of like what we're doing now. Yeah, that would be, yeah, and it's, it's very good. It's very good quality. Um, I mean, I've, I've been through quality dramas over the years, <laughs> and that, that is a good quality. It's very good. And is it only private, or could it, could it be made public like we're doing now? <laughs> or, or... Oh, actually, I don't know, because I've never, I've never ventured into the public space. For me, right. it's all private and then edit and then release so um, I, I, I don't know but it's it, I, it's actually worth looking into it, it it's good it's good uh, any books are you a reader um, I am but what happened <laughs> is that uh, I've actually <laughs> um, we oh we have moved um, I've moved no long ago well kind of Kind of long ago now, but um, <laughs> there's been issues, and the the house is not where it's supposed to be, and so all the books are packed, and there's nothing um, out out um, that I can read. However, um, there is one I can show you. Oh, that. Which is nothing, and 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 don't take me wrong. I haven't started reading it yet, so apologies, Mike. He knows apologies, but and it's nothing to do with the event industry either. It's just a novel, but it's that I purchased that, and that is going to be the next one I read. Okay, I think I, I mean I, I know I do this, and I know quite a few other people that do. You kind of alternate between fiction and nonfiction, and industry and non-industry, and you mix things around a little bit. So um, yeah, I mean it's good to mix. I think you 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 get inspiration, you get ideas. Um, and to be honest, I am a reader, but lately because of blogging, I love watching blogs. I just get so much, uh, so many ideas, so many things coming through um, videos now is kind of my my way of intaking content oops <laughs> no and i'm an audio guy so i mean it's everybody's everybody's different so it's always it's always uh it's always good good to know where where your strengths and where your weaknesses are and what you know what you like and what you don't like so oh. i think if, if i think that's probably a good place as any to leave it um uh, if there's anything um uh, that you wanted to add as far as that other name or anything like that, it's no problem. Otherwise, we can just get into the business of how can people get a hold of you, where can people watch your episodes, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so there's a I'm on social media, obviously, for a lot of different places on social media. Yeah. Uh, website is www.eventsuncovered.tv. 
um, for Facebook, Twitter is events uncovered. Um, it, it, you, it's easy to find uh, events uncovered. Um, and also on YouTube is events uncovered TV. Um, and LinkedIn, you just my name, Sylvia Pellegrini. Now, I was looking around on the website, and I do see that there is a tab on there for Academy. Is that something you want to give us a little bit of a tease about? What is it? it just says coming soon. There's nothing on there. You want to give us a little teaser about what that might yeah, be? Yeah, it says coming soon, um, and um, yeah, it is actually coming soon. There are a lot of news, which I'm not going to share, but uh, it's, it's like a, a, imagine an online uh, resource center. Um, um, done uh, and created by event professionals for event professionals. Um, I'm very excited about it because the, the platform that um, will host um, the Academy is an incredible platform and um, it, it's got a lot of um, it helps. Um, it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be easier, making learning easier. Um, and um, the yeah, actually, I'm gonna leave it as that. I don't wanna. I don't wanna share anymore. <laughs> That's all right. We'll just have to leave people in suspense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as far as as far as what's coming, so so go back and check the website from time to time and see see if that's uh, uh, that tab has been populated yet. But I'm sure you'll be oh, making. You'll hear about it. Yeah, You'll hear about sure, it. <laughs> sure we'll, hear, we'll hear about it. Well, thank you again so much for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, we uh, had, had a few people joining us live, and we always look forward to folks joining us later. If you do have some questions later, feel free to uh, hit us up on social media. You can ask Sylvia directly or send them through us, and we'll be sure to pass them on to her, um, and we can go from there. Uh, but uh, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Event Icons. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us, and we'll hopefully see you next week. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for another amazing episode of Hashtag Event Icons. To catch the transcription and all of the resources mentioned, head to www.helloendless.com slash blog. This week's episode will be posted and available by next Tuesday. Also, let us know what you thought about this week's episode. Share your biggest takeaway and join the Twitter conversation sponsored by Alex Plaxon and Little Bird Told Media. Just tag your post with hashtag event icons. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you again for joining us. We'll see you next Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern right here on hashtag event icons.